How's it going everybody? Armor Studio NYC here at the Hasagawa AH64 Apache in 148th scale. Today we're going to prime and we're going to pre-shade and we're also going to well, pretty much complete this model. If it looks built, it's because it is. Uh, a lot of the video of me building it was kind of raw, so I decided to leave it out. Going forward, however, we will definitely, definitely do a lot of the build. So, when it comes to surfacing or priming the paint, you'd want to use, well, I mean one of these two uh, would be my recommendation. It's Mr. Hobby Finishing. Uh, we're going to use some black paint and we're just gonna get right to it. So pretty much here what you wanna do is you wanna panel lines. So you want to trace all of these nice little rivets, all of the nice little body lines that the kit has come with. And you just wanna go section by section very, very slowly. The airbrush that I'm using is the Harder and Steenbeck Infinity CR Plus 0.15 nozzle. It's really, really good for getting those small lines. Obviously the paint eh, can be a little finicky, but it depends on really how you thin it out. Just want to take your time here. You just want to get all of these lines. You want to make it look really, really good. So that way when we add our base coat to this right here, um, it has some variation in the color. In addition to the post shading that we're going to do, which we're also going to go over. So for the base coat, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a khaki drab or an olive drab. So we're gonna test it out on some spoons. Yes, spoons are probably the best. I don't really care about messing them up. They're not my model, so let's try it out. First one we tried was the olive drab, and this is, well, it's very green. As you can tell by the way it's getting laid down. Um, I have seen reference photos of Apaches. They've come in all different types of colors, I mean, worn ones look black some look green some of them look like beige almost and going forward this is going to be the khaki drab that we try right here um i mean this looks to me this looks a lot better honestly uh, it looks a little bit more realistic it's not so vibrant green and i think i've seen a lot more reference photos with this style paint so there's a comparison after it dries the uh the khaki drab was still a little bit wet because I think I over thinned it. That's no big deal. I was just in the airbrush. I do like this color. It dried brown, which obviously khaki you're looking for, but I think that this one right here is going to be our choice. So now that we have everything all together and we're all appreciated, we're going to start laying down really, really light, thin coats of paint. We're going to do this very gradual so that why uh, we can still kind of see the pre-shade and it doesn't go to complete waste. If you just cover the whole model in heavy coats of paint, then you're going to cover up all that beautiful, hardworking pre-shade that we've done. Again, you want to go really, really light really really thin small sections at a time you no know, like real big sections because uh i feel like you get to focus more once you're in those smaller sections this literally is my favorite part of any modeling is just the painting aspect of everything just because well you know it you really get all your work to come all together. And this is pretty much what you get uh, from your model. Um, so you can tell we have, we do have some panel line variation here and there. I think it looks, Pretty good maybe a little bit too light in the rear there I mean you can really tell like every single panel but I think that's gonna be okay for what we're trying to achieve here and now we get to post shade so obviously post shading is after you lay down 
the main color uh, of your work here. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to skew some of the colors in a certain way in ways that paints fade. So for khaki drab, it's gonna fade into a yellow, a brown, a black. We're gonna use white and we're going to use Tamiya's buff paint, which is very, very good for faded colors. With these colors, we're going to go ahead and we're going to post shade. First, we're gonna do some khaki drab and buff. We're gonna add this to the front of the, uh, of the aircraft simply because it's the direction in which it's going, gets sandblasted. And if you could tell there, look at some of that variation, really right by those missile bays there, you get some really, really good variation by the windows too in the, e uh, the edge of the window, you get some good stuff. Also in the tail, because you get the rotor that goes and it kind of uh, gets all dusty. We're gonna use khaki drab and natal brown now, and we're going to darken up some of these colors because um, green can fade into brown and plus if this is a desert vehicle this is kind of what you'll get um also uh you know i like to think of it as almost like sunburnt style paint too if it's baking out in the sun uh, we're going to use some khaki drab and medium gray this is going to pretty much give us like a like a white paint um as well as khaki drab and flat black we're going to variate and we're going to maybe accent some more panel lines like we did here as you can tell some of the panel lines are up and the exhaust in the back also gets a little uh, tarnishing of the paint you can tell the uh, exhaust in the back does in turn turn black to decals now we're going to go we're going to use my favorite mr color super clear three uh, this stuff loves being thinned out you have to have to thin it very well it will jam up your airbrush it will make your model uh, sticky if you don't as well. So also we're going to go ahead and we're gonna use our Mr. Mark setter for our decals. These decals are pretty good from Hasegawa. Um, you do have to leave them in the water for probably about two to five minutes, uh, but they do move very easy. Be careful, however, because they are very delicate. So if you're not careful, they're gonna go and um, they will rip on you, which I did lose a set of decals for the wings, but let's just keep that between you and me. Always use a cotton swab to pick up any excess and you can just gently dab it, or you could roll it. Um, typically I found dabbing it is a little bit better, not to be confused with the uh, popular dance move. So here we're going to take some of these accented parts and we're going to really uh, focus on dry brushing them. Uh, we're going to use our buff paint because our buff is very, very good for what we're trying to do here. Shake up the bottle. The cap, my cap always gets stuck. I don't know about you guys, but maybe it's because I don't dry off the rim well enough. Actually, this doesn't always happen. That's a, that's a lie. I just, I don't know why I lied to you guys right there. So I always take out of the cap just because uh, I don't want to waste that much paint and uh, I'm really going to brush it on a napkin so that way I can get most of the paint out of there and I really just get a simple dry brush. Uh, we're gonna do the 30 millimeter cannon here and we're just going to pretty much well, brush. This is going to simulate dust accumulation, paint chips, um, you know, scratches and just simple wear and tear of, of anything that's painted uh, for this cannon. It does come under a lot of stress when it's fired. Obviously when it lands, you get a lot of dust pickup from underneath the aircraft. So um, yeah, I kind of went a little heavy with it, but I actually do like the way that this came out. You guys can see some of the detail there is a lot, a lot better. Um, next, we're going to use my favorite silver paint. This is from Testers um, and it says chrome silver. Oops. And we're also going to use a uh, gold leaf. We're going to use the silver for the um, for the end of the cannon here. Uh, if you look at some reference photos, this part is 
very, very, uh, usually polished or shiny. Um, my camera gets focused, that'd be great. Um, and don't mind this paintbrush, this is just a, you know, wasted paintbrush. You don't need to have the best tools in the world. So there we have the, uh, the gun tip. And then here we're gonna use some gold leaf. I don't have brass paint, but gold leaf does do pretty good when it comes to making like shells. Uh, and we're just going to paint the, uh, the belt that we see here that holds all the ammunition. Um, kind of like thin coats, you don't wanna, I feel like you don't wanna overload it with this because, you know, uh, it's brass, it's not, it's not 24 karat gold. Uh, these Apaches are expensive, but that would just make it even more so. Attach everything and here we are guys this is our completed uh, Apache A64 if you notice it doesn't have any front wheels well that's because um, my kit was missing a set of wheel or one wheel so uh, I really couldn't attach the other one which was a big bummer but at the end of the day I think it looks pretty good I wish I could have shown you guys the entire build for this model um, but I did come up with this idea of the YouTube channel and filming relatively late into the build process so again uh, going forward when I do actually uh, become a little bit more established and I do start a new one then I will add all that information thank you guys for joining bye